Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press and I have with me today David Walker. He is the Worldwide Product Manager for Blade Service. David, how are you doing? Very good. So today we are going to be talking about the new Think System SN550. This is our new two socket blade server that fits into the Flex System portfolio. That's correct. So tell us about the server. Who's, um, who's, the, who's the audience that's best suited for this machine? Well, it's, uh, it's a new, as you said, blade server. Mm -hmm. A um, couple things I'd like to mention. As you see here, it comes in the Flex System chassis. Yep. Uh, a couple of points, to, uh, important points to make about that is the Flex System chassis provides the complete infrastructure for the blade in terms of connectivity, power, and fabric access. There's also a management module mm -hmm. that's in the back. So you've got switches, power supplies, fans, all common to all the systems up front. So, and that allows us to make a very modular, dense design on the compute nodes or the or, or the blade servers themselves. Yeah. So I can have 14 of these devices in 10U of space, giving you that density, and it gives you the resiliency of the multiple power supplies and fabrics. Should one thing fail, these continue to run, they continue to have access. So you have that redundancy that's built into the system, and so customers who appreciate that resiliency need mission critical, this is a very good choice in terms of an infrastructure capability that's offered. Right. From a workload standpoint, they're really ideal for virtualization, private cloud, uh, infrastructure workloads, common applications. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was meeting with a customer recently. They were a medical center. They're running their medical records information in a virtualized environment on the system as an example. So really, your line of business can run uh, very well on these types of devices and within the chassis. And, and as you can see in here, we've got a, a variety of different servers here, different uh, uh, machines. Flex system, we've had it for several, many years now. Right. Um, so the, there's a lot of investment protection going on in this box, right? Absolutely. When we designed the Flex chassis, when we came out with the Flex system, one of our intentions was to be able to support multiple generations of Intel processors. And if we looked at each one of these individual uh, blades that are installed here, we've got some that are prior generations of Intel two socket, uh, four socket mm -hmm. capable systems that all can continue to run. And if you want to add the new technology, all you need to do is just buy the new blade with the newest technology, the latest capabilities and performance, and you can install that in that existing infrastructure and carry forward. Yeah, great. Okay, so let's let's look at the specifics of this system. So here we are right here. Mm -hmm. The SN550 is a, a half wide um, form factor. So as, as you mentioned, we can have up to 14 of them in, in, the, in the chassis. Correct. Um, the main component in the middle is the two drive bays. These are hot swap, two and a half inch drive bays, and we support SAS or SATA or NVMe. That's correct. Depending on the back plane you, you've selected, right? Right, right. Yep. So select the drives, HDDs, SSDs, NVMe, depending mm -hmm. upon the performance characteristics of your application or your processing needs. And uh, we have the two and a half inch devices that are supported there. And those are getting to have you know, more and more capacity all the time. So you can actually get a lot of storage, uh, local storage available in those products. Right. Yep. Now on my side, there's the uh, USB 3 port. Um, next to that is a what we call the dongle connection, mm -hmm. and this is for local management. If you're in your data center and you need direct access to this particular server, um, we provide this cable here, which gives you serial port, two USB 2s, and a VGA port as well. Right. So that's that's that for local connections. Right. Um, on your side, what have you got? Uh, over here, we have a power button. There's a couple of LEDs that will light up. Mm -hmm. uh, to give you a little bit of system information. And we also have over here what I call a USB management button. Mm -hmm. So one of the new features that we have on Think System, and it's available on uh, not only our Blade servers that you see here, but also on some of our rack servers, right. is a new feature that allows for some local management with your uh, with a handheld type of device. That could be a phone, it could be uh, a tablet. And, and you plug and it directly. From you plug it in here. Via, via and a USB you, cable And if you push it, this yeah. button, it becomes a management port. So you're accessing the management processor that's available in the mm -hmm. system. You're using Xclarity as the interface. Yep. And so you can do that uh, local management uh, with, that, uh, with that type of connection. So it's just a con another convenience feature for management of the systems uh, in the data center. And of course, that's local management. The server and the, the chassis supports remote management. Absolutely. Uh, remote control um, through the um, chassis management module at the back of the server, uh, Ethernet connections in, um, and you can manage these, these systems 
uh, remotely as well as, as well as locally. Right, they can be from a remote management console and you can also manage those remotely from your mobile devices as well, which is another feature of Xclarity that's available. Mm. Yep, yeah, very good. All right, so let's uh, take it out of the um, out of the chassis and have a look inside, shall we? Okay, very easy to do. All you do, you flip a little lever and pull it out. If you were removing a two socket rack server, right now you'd be dealing with cable management yes, arms, right. uh, strings of cable coming off the back, uh, so that's quite a bit more complicated, and that's one of those infrastructure things that people appreciate about right. blades. Once you set it up in the back, there's usually reduced power, cap uh, re reduced power cables, you know, reduced network cables. You save a lot of expense on those. Those transceivers and yes, connectors exactly. can be extremely expensive if you have to attach to each and every server, uh, and that is obviously avoided here with this design. The connections we have instead of all of those are these these power blocks here. These connections here. What have we got? Correct. Well, we have a power connector. Uh, we have a management port which accesses that mm -hmm. uh, uh, chassis management module mm -hmm. connected to that. Uh, and then we have two fabric connectors back here so we can support Ethernet. We also have uh, fiber channel, infin infiniband, infiniband yeah. and fiber channel uh, switches and connectors available. So you have various I.O. options uh, for this device. Yeah. All right. Let us open it up have a look inside. So this server, it's a two-socket server Correct. using the Intel Xeon processor scalable family CPUs. These are the new, new processors from Intel. Correct. And let me just remove a little air baffle there mm -hmm. that helps route air through the, uh, the various devices on the system. And you can see we have one processor installed, uh, space for a second processor. Both of these processors will support up to 12 DIMMs each, so 24 DIMMs, mm -hmm. uh, which is the maximum uh, supported by these processors. Yeah. So if you're using, for example, the 64 gig LR DIMMs, then you get up to 1.5 terabytes. Is Absolutely, that right? yeah. that's correct. Yeah. So a lot of memory expandable uh, expansion capability. We also support the entire SKU stack on these. Intel's new, they have bronze, silver, gold, and platinum processors. Yeah. We support that entire SKU stack up to 165 watts, 28 cores per processor. So if you really have those demanding workloads, you can get the maximum cores available in this system. You can get these new high-performance processors uh, that we support in here, uh, both, as I mentioned, gold and platinum, besides uh, the silver and bronze SKUs. Mm -hmm. So whatever your workload need is, this system covers it from top to bottom. Yeah. Now, let's talk about the, the drive subsystem. Right. Um, this machine has the, the SATA backplane. SATA Correct. Backplane? Yep. Yeah, so we have a SATA backplane that's available. Uh, we also have an NVMe backplane right. that can support NVMe drives. It can also support SATA drives mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Yep. So you get a couple of different choices there. Now, if you need to support uh, SAS drives, or SAS and SATA with some hardware grade capability, we actually have a couple of different RAID adapter options, which will give you that hardware RAID for SAS and SATA drives. Mm. Uh, this is our advanced adapter, just there. which yep. inc it, it just installs right on top, kind of a daughter card notion. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, it, this also comes with two gigabyte of flashback cache memory. So it gives you some additional disk performance when you use that. Yep. Uh, and, also, super and a super cap, uh, which gives you the ability to save things to that memory should there be any kind of power uh, power failure with that. So we have a basic RAID card that doesn't include the cache, doesn't include the supercapacitor, but gives you that basic hardware RAID for uh, additional reliability and performance. Uh, just doesn't have that uh, the yeah. cache option available to it. Now, as well as that, as well as the, the two drives in the front, the this server also supports the M.2 solutions we, we're offering for all of our Think System portfolio. That's correct. Um, so there it is installed, and I ha and I have one of one of them in my hands as well. The one I have is the dual adapter, the M.2 dual adapter, and it's called that because it ha supports two M.2 cards, one installed one installed on either side, and it, this adapter includes a RAID controller, this little chip just there, to give you RAID one. So this is a redundant pair configured as RAID one for your operating system, right? Right. So uh, 
ideally you're going to install your hypervisors on here. And so if you have a mission critical uh, type of situation, yep. you want to make sure you have redundancy, you have redundancy with this type of adapter. And as you mentioned, these are available across the product portfolio. And you know, the memory DIMMs, uh, the drives that we support here, the M.2, and even and even some even though this is this card is is tailored to this device, it's a similar type of RAID technology that's available on our other system. So we tried to build as much commonality. Yeah. So if you choose our blades, if you choose some of our uh, rack-based server systems, um, you'll see a lot of commonality in terms of All the its, same drivers. its, its capabilities, yeah. <laughs> its drivers, yeah. uh, the devices that go into it, and of course, X-Clarity management is used with our blades as well as with yeah. our uh, high-volume rack servers. Now, let's talk about uh, I.O. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this server has the uh, a fabric connector? Yes. So we call this a fabric connector, also known as a periscope connector because yep. it looks like a perhaps a little periscope. And mm -hmm. what this is doing, it's lifting up uh, 4 by 10 gigabytes of, of uh, Ethernet. Yeah. We have an Intel Ethernet LOM that's built into the chipset that we've decided to take advantage of yes. to offer a high performance, uh, cost effective uh, network connection for people who would like to use that. Yeah, and, the, uh, and then this, and this routes through the mid-plane to the I.O. modules in the back of the chassis, right? Correct. Yeah. So you've got, it's a four port. You would have two ports go into one switch, two ports go into the other switch. Yeah. Should you lose uh, a path, you know, you have a redundant path that's available there. And no transceivers needed. No transceivers yeah. needed, absolutely. This connected, this one here, this is the, uh, this is a fiber channel card. Let me just Correct. pull that out. Mm -hmm. um, it's some effort. There we go. So you can see this is a this is a standard form factor for for um, our flex system servers. Um, fits in the PCIe connector just there. Right. And and as we mentioned before, these are available in Ethernet, fiber channel, and InfiniBand. Right. Yeah. And we have uh, two port. Uh, versions of the uh, fiber channel cards available. We also have four port versions mm -hmm. of the fiber channel card available. So you actually get good I.O. performance even though we've only got two slots, you've got a lot of capabilities that's built yeah. into the system and then you've got the switches that can then obviously uh, send that out to the network, top of rack, uh, your SANs and, yes. and that type of thing. So this, this the, the, the uh, I.O. that goes into this slot here, with or the, the periscope for example, that goes to I/O module bays one and two, the back Correct. of the back of the chassis, and this one in slot two that goes to bays three and four. Right. So again, there's a redundant connection, there's redundant switches at the back of the back of the chassis. Right. Yeah. And in, in addition to this I/O port, if a customer has a preference for a different type of network interface, mm -hmm. we also have some optional. Uh, Ethernet cards, yep. two port, four port, 10 gig, and in the not too distant future, we'll also be offering 25 gig support in this device should you uh, like to take advantage of some yeah. of the higher speed protocols that are starting to become yeah. available. Okay. Yep, so that's IO. Now, um, this server, just like the rest of the Flex System family, um, has uh, light path diagnostics, right? Correct. So tell us about that. Yeah. Well, the obviously, if you take this out of the system, uh, is should there be some kind of failure, perhaps you got a little system message, and then what happens, you might s figure out, well, uh, what's going on with it? Maybe you don't have your mobile device with you. This can be removed from the system. It's hot swappable, so anything that's running in the chassis is not impacted. Mm -hmm. You can remove this. You press the power button, and then there are a variety of light uh, diodes down here which take tell you what it, the failing component is and say for example a common thing might be a memory dim fails yep right uh, so now I've got 24 dims uh, which one is it we can sit here and kind of plug one out and plug one in and make sure it all matches or if you're using light path diagnostics uh, besides lighting up the memory diode here to tell you have mm -hmm. a memory failure we actually have little diodes right next to the dim so each one right each one yep. and so it'll light up the uh, the failing dim uh, you can see it immediately replace that no mix and match no plugging no guesswork uh, put it back in and you're ready to reinstall stick it, it stick it back into the chassis and away you go exactly yeah so just another management convenience feature that uh, we've built in this and we've had this in multiple generations yeah. a lot of customers appreciate that yeah all right, so there you go. This is the Think System SN550, our new two socket blade server. Correct. Right. Yep. Dave, thanks very much. Thank you. Hope you found the video useful. Now, if you're looking for more information about the server, we do also have a product guide available to you. The link to that is in the description for the video. So, hope you found the video useful, and we will see you later. Bye.